Hey everyone, the grid element that we included with Breakdance 1.4, we actually created that in Element Studio. So I actually recorded myself creating the element and I didn't record everything, like I didn't include me polishing it up, I didn't include the initial scope, but like the general gist of me actually building the element, I recorded that. So watch this video and you'll see me actually build the grid element that is included with Breakdance using Element Studio. Let's make a simple grid element in Element Studio. So we're gonna go into Element Studio and let's just do a new element. I'm just going to call this one uh, Basic Grid. And let's go ahead and add this to the page just so we can see what's going on here. And let's just go into the settings and let's set this class name to BDE Grid. And then we're going to go into the design controls. Right now there are no controls. Let's add a control section. We're going to call this one um, I just the number of columns, right? The num number of you know items per row. So items per row. Uh, oh, no, that's, that's a section. Uh, so I'll just call this grid and then add a control items per row. We're going to make that a number. And that's just going to be your items per row, right? And then we could add like spacing too. So I'm going to add a, sorry, a preset. And we're going to do, we're going to look for spacing. We want spacing, um, spacing all Y is what we want. I'll just call it spacing. And I'm trying to do this like the convention we use for other elements, right? So if we added a heading, you go to the design tab, you got your spacing with your margin top, margin bottom, and for my grid, um, same idea. I don't want spacing all Y, I just want spacing margin Y. We're going to call this spacing. Okay, and then normally we'd provide a size option for certain elements. Typography, we won't do for, that's only for the heading. Let's take a look at what we got to do. If we got spacing, um, we've got container, so we don't want, we want the same, same thing for our grid elements. So let's add container. So we can just save this. We could open up the div to see what we did there, right? This container. So I'm just going to just copy that. And then let's go back to a uh, basic grid. And we're just going to paste that in and drag that up. And now we have those same controls there. Now let's look at the code for the div. So we're going to go open the div again. Um, and let's look for... Um, here, simple, simple layout. No, we don't want simple layout. We want the we want the container stuff. Okay, so we got our spacing is coming from the container padding. Our borders are coming from the container borders. I gotta I gotta uh, just command C to copy, um, and then I'll, I'll take another look at this. Is there any other use of container here? Yeah, we got our width, our min height, um, background, etc. Um, okay, we don't need this one. So I'm going to copy that code, and then we're going to open up our basic grid again, and we're going to go in here, and we're going to paste. That was actually in selector, so we're just going to paste that in. And now we can go to container, we can set our width, and we can see it's actually doing something. Um, and we can add our, we can do our padding, and we can do our, you know, borders. We could do like three pixels solid, um, and there we go. Um, there's no background color on container. I'll have to look into why that is. That might just be a remnant that we, we kept for backwards compatibility and then we took background color out of the container controls. I suspect that's what we did, but I'll take another look. Um, okay, uh, now let's make it so it actually displays the items in a grid. So let's just look up CSS grid on CSS tricks and it's just going to be display grid. Come on, where, where are we? Grid basics, display grid, and then you create your grid template columns. Um, okay, so we're just going to add display grid to the default CSS. So let's go to the default CSS, copy the class, paste, um, display grid. And then let's say we want to do like a three column grid. Um, as a grid template columns, then we can do repeat number of columns and then one fr and like i'm not here to teach css but anyway so we do um grid template columns repeat three one fr uh, we want to be able to put elements inside this so let's go to the html structure and just as a demo i'm just going to put three divs and then we'll do whatever okay so now it's displaying that nicely in the grid but we want to control items per row so Let's go into the, the generated CSS, and we're just going to do a variable. 
um we're going to do uh the grid items per row and then we're going to go to that control and we're going to copy the code and we're going to paste that there and now we have our grid items per row um now what we're actually going to do is we're going to go to the other css we're going to do uh there defaulting to three and then if they specify items per row then you know we got it um what else do i want to do with this element because i want to make this nice i mean i'm not going to like fully finish it in this video this is more of like an element studio tutorial and i haven't rehearsed this so i'm just going to kind of keep talking and keep working you guys get to watch how i work okay we've got our container we got our space we're going to make the spacing work so let's save this and open up the div um Here's the default styles for the div, so we don't we don't really need any of that. We should stick max width 100% in there. Um, we may also need to do position relative and background size cover. Let's see what that's actually for. That's for we got our uh, we had this separate background tab. I wonder if we should have background controls on the grid. I certainly don't see why not. Okay, let's let's copy the spacing stuff. Let's add background controls. Um, and then we don't need layout because it's grid. We're going to add, add gap, though, for sure. Um, okay. So let's go over here. And for bet, where's it? Okay, here we go. This, this is how they do background. We're not doing fancy background on divs, are we? Mm, we are. We're allowing fancy background on div. That allows you to... Really? Then why aren't we just doing fancy container? Why are why are we allowing why are we allowing that on a div? Ah, because fancy container has more. It has video and slideshow, and that wouldn't be supported on a div because we need a hell of a lot more stuff. Okay, that's fine. Um, we'll do the same thing. Let's let's copy this from the div element so we can actually drag children into the grid and do background at the same time. So let's open up basic grid and there's our HTML. There's, there's the HTML. Children lets you put other items in the grid. But can we drag anything into it yet? Um, no, we can't. You'll see in the structure panel we can try, but we can't do it. But we can't with the div. What's the difference? We go to the grid. We go to settings and nesting rules. Um, element to be a descendant of. No, it's not. It's just, element type. It's element type. It's not final. It's a container. You can put anything you want in the container. Um, yeah, okay. Um, let's go ahead and save that. And then boom, and boom, and boom. We'll just do, we'll do this, and this, and this, and that, and that, and that. And we can see our grid is, is gridding. Okay, nice. Where was I? Got to do the background. So we got to go to the um, design controls and add add the background. Is it less fancy background? Yeah, it's less fancy background. Cool. Okay, let's copy that. No code help for less fancy background. Um, although we're just going to go to the div where we use less fancy background. Right, yeah, less fancy background. And then for the HTML, we did that. For the CSS, we did... We did that. And that's it. Okay, cool. Basic grid... There we go. Oops, don't want to do that. I want to save. Um, okay, so now we got our background. We can do a background image. We can do background overlay. We can do background transitions, whatever. Okay, let's put, let's put in the same order. So you got background there and then container there, just like div. Okay, it's background, container, and then spacing. So background, container, spacing. And then in div, we have layout because it's flex, but in grid, we have. Okay, we got items per row. We're going to have gap, which is going to be a unit. Um, we probably want vertical gap, too. Hmm. Should we just make people write that with CSS? I don't know, right? We don't have it for div. For now, we'll stick to this. If people are like, oh, my God, I need to also control my, you know, my row gap separately from my column gap, then maybe we'll change the whole whole thing here and add like vertical gap that appears but i don't I, you don't you don't want to put too many controls in an element and start making things hard to find right 
a lot of people have said, oh my God, add just every single option to every single, every single thing in every panel. Well, look at the menu builder element, right? If we did that, look at how many options there are. People say, oh, well, we don't want to have to look in pop-ups, pop-outs for these, but I mean, shit, there's like hundreds and hundreds of options. What do you want to do? Like scroll until you get all the way to Timbuk2 to see the options? No, you don't. So that's what the search feature is for. Anyway, I digress, but you're always, you always got to be thinking about keeping it simple when you're, you're building elements, um, only essential settings. Otherwise you just, you'll never find anything. Okay. Gap, uh, unit PX. Let's, let's copy that. Um, let's go into the code. Um, we don't have a default gap, so we're not gonna have a default gap for grid either. We're just gonna have them touching. Should we, we probably should though, for columns, we have a default gap. Um, and that's in the global settings. We should probably use that. We should probably just change this to like default gap, change the label to default gap, and then apply that to the grid gap as well. But that's for us, not for you to worry about if you're building elements. Okay, so we're gonna do the BDE grid gap. Um, and for now, I'll just hard code it at 20 pixels. Oh no, that, should, that needs to be in the, this needs to be like that. No, 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 it needs to be BD grid gap is going to be valued variable. Um, and then here we're going to do gap is going to be there BD grid gap or default to 20 pixels. And as you can see now we have our gap, but if we specify, let's go to the grid. If we specify to grab a gap, we have you know, different gap amount. Okay, that's cool. So we've got our items per row, our gap. We're gonna have to make this responsive. Right, how many items per row it? The smaller or larger or whatever. Um, okay, we'll do that later. We have our we have our background, we have our container. Do we have our spacing? I don't think we did our spacing yet. So let's just uh oh whoops, let's open the grid and let's go to uh, spacing. Let's just copy the code for that. Go to the CSS and paste that code in. And now we have our spacing. Let's add those spacing bars. So let's go into the settings and uh, where are spacing bars? We got to have spacing bars somewhere. Spacing bars, add new spacing bar. It's going to be margin top. Um, yeah, I get it already knows, huh? Um, and let's do margin bottom. Oh, no, I have to type it. I guess it doesn't already know. Design.spacing dot uh, break point. Is it dot break point dot margin bottom or is it dot margin bottom dot break point? That sounds awfully um, suspect. So I'm going to look at div. It sounds like we need a little polish on Element Studio in that area. Yeah, no, it's like that. I'm like that. I knew it. Um, basic grid, spacing bars, boom, and I don't know, we want margin bottom, break point, boom, and boom, and there we go, now we have our spacing bars, draggable spacing, that's nice, that works, let's just clear those out. Um, we have our container, which which works. Let's undo that. We have our background, which works. I'm not going to do the whole image. Let's let's just test gradient to make sure I did that fancy thing correctly. Um, I'd like to know what the position relative thing is for on the div. We put that there for a reason, but the question is, what's the reason? Right? Why why are these the defaults on a div? Well, I can't okay, remember why we have text line left. Um, yeah, okay, we're going to do the same thing on the uh, basic grid. And note, when you're building elements, you can open up any of our elements to see how things are done. Because, you know, for the most part, they're all built in Element Studio. Um, okay, let's go to the default, default CSS. We got our grid. This, like that, 
keyboard shortcuts and code mirror is dope. Oh, why does it, why is that got extra space? Boom, boom. That's nice. And now let's make our grid. Uh, let's delete all this other garbage off the page. Let's make our grid uh, responsive. So let's let's enable media queries. And now it's three, but we could go down to wait. No, I gotta enable that for gap. Okay, enable media queries for gap, and let's enable it for items per row. Um, enable media queries for items per row and gap. Um, let's do three and uh, 100, and then go down here. We're gonna do two and 50, and then we're gonna go down here. We're gonna do one and 20. So boom, and that's it's just gonna work because we already wrote the CSS to make that work. So it's just it's generating this for each breakpoint when a value is present, and then the CSS is always there, so it just handles it automatically. Um, so that's nice. We got our basic uh, grid element. We may ship a basic grid element in 1.4 before we do the full-blown CSS grid. We're also pretty far along on the full-blown CSS grid, so we might just do that. Not sure. If this is product consideration. We're thinking about it. I kind of think this element's going to be super useful. I have a really good feeling about this one because... Otherwise, you're doing this, which is annoying. So it's not cool. This is cooler. Let's make sure we can put anything in here. Let's just add another basic grid to the page. And we, we want that to default to 100% width. So width 100%. Um, and then let's say we were just going to do like image boxes. Boom. Um, let's clear those styles and then boom, boom, boom. Actually, actually, I want that in there, but I want to clear the width out and then just boom. Um, and there we go. That's nice. Now we have our basic grid. Let's save that. Um, let's go to grid. Let's just increase the gap there. Let's go two. That's nice. That's that's a nice simple grid element. I'm sure there's going to be more that I'm going to think to add to this before we or if we even ship this. But you get the general idea. That's how to build an element in Breakdance in just a short time using Element Studio. Check the documentation on our website for how to actually save these elements into a plugin, which you can then sell or give away for free or install on your client sites if you want to create your own set of custom elements for building client sites um you can do that no code all visual use element studio use breakdance okay this is lewis from breakdance and thank you for watching